Okay, so I just tried, like, this weird intro thing, and it, it was too weird, so I stopped it, and I re-recorded it. <laughs> what is up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Third Eye Sars. I gotta get a theme song. I gotta get a theme song, guys. If you guys make music and you're willing to make a theme song for me, please send it over. Um... Contact me via Instagram and we shall talk about it. Okay, so today is kind of gonna be I don't know if it's gonna be short. I don't know. I don't I don't really know what we're doing mainly because I'm kind of working at the same time that I'm doing this I was supposed to wake up earlier before I started working so that I can do this episode but I've just been going to sleep late, I guess, and I could not wake up this morning. Alright, I woke up to my alarm, and then I was gonna, like, rest my eyes for a little bit, and then, like, a whole hour passed, supposedly. So, <laughs> here we are. But, um, how are you guys? How are you? Um, I hope you are doing well. For all my people in America, I hope you guys are also, well, I mean, I hope everybody's doing well, but... You guys, I hope you guys are staying mentally well. There's a lot of shit going on right now. And we are going to talk about that. I don't... Well, first of all, we're going to be talking about the whole George Floyd thing and the riots and just everything that's been happening right now in America with police brutality specifically right now. Um, I don't want to because I don't like topics like this. I really don't. Like, they must be talked about, and they are talked about by plenty of people, and that's why, like, I feel like, well, why should I have to talk about it? Because everybody else is talking about it. Well, I feel like it's my obligation to talk about it, mainly because my main job here is to calm you people, try and get you on a more non-dualistic type of thinking, non-judgmental and give you a more wider perspective so a lot of people are talking about it but they're talking about the same stuff with the same opinions with the same viewpoints and i can't i can't i gotta, I gotta give you guys something different um bear with me if i pause a little bit because I, I am working and I just have to like keep refreshing this page to see if like anybody joins the class or whatever but um I did pull a card for you guys uh it might be a short episode I'm not too sure um but I wish I had a scrunchie because I have like a lot of hair and I cannot put it up right now okay so I did pull a card for you guys um before I start anything what would I like to say um, I don't think there's really, really anything for me to say. <laughs> okay, so, let's begin. The card I pulled for you guys is the community card. Now, I love this card. Why? Because the question that I asked um, to pull this card kind of, you know, got in my mood and connected a little. And I was like, what message should I give my people? my people you guys are my people my listeners um i did say my listeners not my people <laughs> but i like my people if you don't mind being my people then use my people <laughs> um so the question i asked was what what message can i give my listeners um about well, everything that's been happening with the whole uh george floyd thing and riots and stuff um what can i can i kind of tell tell my listeners and I got the community card. I got the community card, just amazing. So basically this card, it shows like three ladies. Um, if you don't know, I'm pulling from the Sandra Ann Taylor deck, energy oracle cards. Um, there's like three ladies here and they're kind of just, you know, being beautiful. And there's like floating lights around them. Um, so these floating lights kind of represent the, the ever present um, spirit and the three people there they represent community so they're basically like exchanging ideas sharing um things i guess <laughs> just talking you know being being a community and this card i feel this card what it means you know when it when 
you read it in the book, it says that um, now's the time to call on your your community. Um, whether you know who it is or they may be coming towards you, um, community is very much present at the moment. It may be coming or it's present. And I feel like this has a lot to do with everything that's been going on. A lot of people are joining up together to fight um, what's been happening. Um, but I also feel like personally, when I got this card, my first initial reaction was now's the time to become a community instead of keeping us divided. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Haku, well, okay, not what I was going to say, but Haku, <laughs> Haku may be joining us right now because she's super lovey-dovey today. Um, but for those of you who don't know, who may not be in America and who just don't know what the heck is going on. Um, or maybe you may be in America and you don't know what's going on. But you'll be surprised. Um, basically, police brutality is very much a thing here. Specifically, um, white police officers unnecessarily killing um, black people or um, just hurting them to the point where it's disgusting. Um, but before I go any further... For those of you who don't know me, if this is your first time listening to, uh, if this is your first time listening to my podcast episode, welcome. But, um, <laughs> well, that's not what I was going to say. I said it very, very, like, welcome. Welcome. But, um, I am very much a person who advocates for very out there ideas. So this is not going to be your, if you're looking for, like, pro black lives matter you know talk about it you know feel it kind of podcast this is not that this is very much i'm gonna try to give you it at a very non-dualistic viewpoint so with that being said i don't like saying white police officer with killing black people like that's not a thing that's even in my vocabulary nor like my ideals so that that's kind of like something that's very it's very hard for me to like relate to people just because like even when you, you just want to like explain like oh yeah it's like that that black that black guy over there like i can't i can't even like 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 why like i just like honestly i just see like human and like as weird like as ba- i don't know if it sounds like basic or something like I literally, like, the, the, if I see, like, like, the first thing I see isn't somebody's skin color. Like, I, my mind just, like, goes, like, beyond that. I, I grew up in a very, like, diverse area, like, always. Like, it was never, I mean, like, some places, because I've moved around a lot when I was younger, and maybe, like, some places that I've lived in were primarily, uh, white people, but it was never, um... I always grew up in a diverse area, so it was, like, I never saw, like, du- like duality when it came to, to skin color or anything, and I never judged anybody based off of their skin color. Like, it's just never, it was never something in my mentality, so, like, it's hard for me to see it now, um, and, like, to even feel like that's even a, a thing kind of weirds me out, but it is a thing, because that's kind of what America was built off of, is racism. Um, you know, slavery was very much a thing very recently, actually. Um, it's still a thing around the world, but specifically, like, with white people and black people, um, in America. But, with just, okay, that was, I kind of got a little topic, but anyways, that's what, what's been happening. It's been happening for years, um, and we've been fighting it. The thing is that every time something happens, you know, we've seen these riots before because of it, and it's a repeating thing, and it's annoying, to us because you know we keep fighting it once it happens but it keeps happening so obviously what we're doing isn't strong enough or more potent enough or we're not actually being heard because it it's a repeated history process like why is it that this has to keep happening why do we have to keep addressing this subject so that's kind of at the point where everybody is like everybody's super upset um so they're freaking well the okay the police officers have been charged and everybody's trying to figure out like, you know what, what's happening next i'm not really following the case because i'm not really somebody who follows chaos um because it has become chaos with the riots and looting like literally where my apartment was in downtown la like literally the same block i watched videos like i no longer live there but 
I watched videos of it get destroyed and it was horrible to see um, that all around the world, my like in New York, in just all around all around the country, people I it's not even like there's a line between the people who actually want to peacefully protest and fight the cause and then there's people who just want to cause destruction they're mad okay i feel like there's people who are mad about it so they're causing destruction and then there's just people who don't like they just want to cause destruction like they see destruction being caused so like they just want to join in like everybody has kind of their own agenda that's what i've been been seeing so anyways that's kind of like a brief overview of um what's what's been happening here i guess um so now i don't like talking about these subjects because they're very controversial and also like i am i'm not an advocate of unnecessary chaos and racism now now where my problem falls kind of getting off topic with with this card um actually let me just okay this is the main topic of what i'm always talking about so <laughs> let me just wrap up the card so basically you got the community card i feel like this is a time for you guys to find find community rather than than further divide yourselves now this is gonna kind of go into what i was saying but um now the problem i've been seeing and now this is why i don't like touching the subject because I feel like even much, even much, that's not, I don't think that's a thing. Um, <laughs> um, racism is very alive in the black community. Now, if you're saying, well, that's because, you know, people have been racist to black people for years and yes that's very much true but that doesn't give you an excuse to be racist and if you're offended you can happily not listen to my episode or my whole podcast because um it is true i've seen it with my own eyes i've here i see it with people i know and just with the whole situation it's and this is why okay and for those of you who don't also know me or have listened to this episode i'm very much a fan of conspiracy theories now i'm not that much of a conspiracy theorist as i was years ago because i very much was but i know that there's a lot of shit going on in this government i don't even know if this episode probably play probably will but you know keep it keep it saved <laughs> Because it might come off the internet. Nah, I doubt it. I'm not leaking anything. But there, there's some stuff going on in the government. And they feed off of our chaos, our racism against each other. They like to add fuel to the fire, as I like to say. Um, so they keep the topic going. And they keep bringing in these scenarios where it keeps the topic very much alive now i like to say the only thing that is keeping racism alive is the topic of racism if we literally obliterated the topic of racism from a whole generation then the whole next generation most likely would not be racist like if this whole generation would just like deal with it which is hard because, of course, we were we, a lot of us grew up racist without if, without us even knowing. I'm not saying me specifically or you specifically, but I know like primarily um, in the South, for example, they have like they still have Confederate flags up and stuff like that. So like it's still it it's been going on, so it's still carried on. But if we stop carrying it on, maybe it won't be a thing anymore, you know what I mean? But it's kept a topic so that we can continue to have this this duality so that we can continue to have this fighting. And I don't I don't know I don't know what they get out of it. I guess they get power because they can do stuff like this if we riot. What's the 
you're gonna hear Haku probably playing because she looks super excited right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. But um, yeah, they chaos, right? So riots, chaos, martial law. We lose a lot of our rights because we're chaotic. They get more power over us. Um, I also feel like hate me for this as well. I really don't care. I'm very much a conspiracy theorist. So I feel like the Black Lives Matter movement is very much government funded. I feel like that personally. I don't know if this is true, but I'm very skeptical of mainstream things. Anything that becomes very mainstream, I'm extremely skeptical about because it's something to profit off of and the government loves money so especially when it 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 divides people i'm very much i'm very much um an advocate for it's government funded whether it's openly government funded because i highly doubt that it is it may be but maybe the and this is the thing you don't know anything this is the thing you don't know anything so i'm not gonna say it's a fact but i'm gonna be skeptical of it anyways um just because you don't know anything and i'm gonna hit some i'm gonna hit you with some other um, other conspiracy theories okay um i've also recently heard i don't know if this is true but this is kind of going on in the the conspiracy theory world that and i, I think this actually may be true the officer who killed george floyd they worked together. I think George Floyd was a police officer. This is something I heard. Okay, I don't know if this is a fact. I've heard that I think he was a police officer or I don't know. Somehow they worked together and they were friends. And then I also heard something else that like, I don't know, he, they had like spoken before he, he killed him or something. I don't know. I don't know. Something weird. The whole basis of that, that conspiracy theories was that he was killed on purpose. Like, it was all planned, kind of. Or, like, maybe he did something that they, they had to kill him because, like, I don't know. I don't know. But it was kind of meant to cause all of this. Now, I wouldn't doubt it. I'm not saying that's what happened. I wouldn't doubt that that's what happened because there's some fishier stuff that's been going on. But... Um, where was I going with that? <laughs> where was I going with that? Yeah, I just, I wouldn't doubt it. I'm not saying this is what happened, I just wouldn't doubt it. But, also, it's just, okay, so that, that, that's in its, its own thing, I guess you could say. But it just sh- shows, and all, okay, I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be jumping around, but like, after this whole quarantine thing, okay, I thought we were gonna get like, a curfew with the quarantine um like everything that happened because of the riot stuff i thought was gonna happen because of the virus now it's so weird that this happened right after kind of like the virus wave kind of went down and the city was right about to like open back up it was like the virus was the main thing and then as it kind of started drifting down and like, okay, now life is back to normal. Let's o- reopen the city. Right when that point happened, this happened. And now chaos is everywhere. We have a curfew. There's people destroying the streets. Like everything that I thought was going to happen because, you know, like food shortages or like just everybody thinking that the world was going to end. Like I thought that was going to happen because of that. But it happened right after. It was like, like, it's just something keeps happening. And it was like first, okay, we had the we had kind of our rights taken from us to stay at home like we're not we weren't forced to stay at home but it was like we were told to and we and we did because of course we want to be safe but it was kind of like government issued um we couldn't really travel like it it was we were very restricted and then we got even more restricted with these with these curfews and stuff but anyways i just feel like that's kind of weird as well um but to kind of like ease uh i guess what i've been saying i do really feel like um whether like okay say the whole thing isn't a conspiracy theory right um (laughs) 
and a black man to say was killed by a white police officer. That is horrible, first of all. Now, I also heard, okay, before I start saying that, that the Minneapolis police have been charged with doing the same thing over a hundred times and they were never addressed. Like, it was trying to get kind of just pushed aside and like now finally like this came to surface i guess maybe because it was on video i don't know but um anyways with that side even like that's horrible in itself but who's to say he killed him because okay i don't think he killed him because he was black i'm not gonna say that I feel like a lot of people think that maybe and maybe okay maybe he did because he was racist but who knows i don't know the guy do you know the guy because i don't know the guy i don't know if he was actually racist i heard they were friends but i think that's true okay i think that they were i don't see any pictures of them together or anything but this is i think i can i think i believe that that could be true but okay let's say they weren't friends right maybe he's racist and he killed him because he's black because he wasn't a, 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 a resisting arrest. <laughs> so I don't know why I struggled with that. He wasn't uh, resisting arrest. So it's not like he killed him because he was resisting arrest. So he could have killed him maybe because he was black and he was racist. Now, that would very much make people upset because racism is very much alive. Um, and people want to protest against it. But it could just be a police officer killing a person based off of like police brutality not because of a racist thing just being you know police brutality and then that's very much where a lot of these protests are coming from like defund the police um just kind of like against the police department because of how police treat people and you know we've seen it with the police treating the rioters like rioters not even not even rioters just protesters who aren't even doing anything being like extremely ridiculous about stuff um so it could be either or with that um but i guess i guess what i wanted to say with touching this i, I wanted to touch it because i haven't addressed it on social media like i don't i don't like talk, like i don't like controversial topics mainly because i'm never on the side of anyone <laughs> like i can't join sides i can only observe the situation and try to come up with what's actually happening try to like see all sides of it try to come up to my own conclusion and my own kind of um like solution i guess not solution but you know my my own theory and i guess solution um i'm not really one to jump on the bandwagon super fast just because i'm very much skeptical of mainstream stuff so as soon as this happened like i'm not gonna be like oh this is devastating blah blah, blah. one because i know the government i know the media and i know they're feeding off of it so originally and I still don't know if it's just a plant to cause chaos and to keep people upset, to keep people divided. Because that's very much probably what it is. That's what it always is. Anything that's on the news like that and becomes mainstream, it's probably like planted by the media. So I'm not going to join in on, on their little game and be like, oh, this is terrible. Like, yeah, it's terrible. But you guys are even worse because you're creating it so i'm coming after you i'm not going after your little topic i'm gonna come after the whole thing the the originators of it you know what i mean and you know i've always been it's so funny i've always been scared like i'm not gonna be saying this on freaking this is gonna be posted like if it's real they'll come after me and if i freaking die or disappear like you guys know why but when I was younger, I always used to be, like, scared of that shit. Like, I always used to be scared that the government was after me, and I didn't know why. Like, I didn't even know that the government was sketchy when I was younger, but I felt like they were coming after me. They probably they probably knew that I was going to become some kind of, like, 
person like this. <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, like I'm saying, like okay, for example, with the whole black square thing, okay. I love you guys and of course you wanna okay, so the whole okay, this was the thing, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, um everybody posted kind of like black squares on their Instagram to drown out and it's like with a certain hashtag um to drown out the kind of uh sorry i'm trying to like plug in my other laptop for work um it was to drown out like i guess everything else like to stop everything like self-promotion um advertisements like posting pictures of yourself like just stop everything for like a whole day and let let only like news and media and and references for this whole everything that's been happening like for the rioters well not for the rioters for the protesters i guess you could say i'm calling them rioters because <laughs> i've only seen riots but i know i've seen peaceful protests but um just so like more and it was like um i don't know what the quote was but it was like basically for more uh black voices to be heard and and more news can be you know dealt with and and stuff like that but what it did and everybody was so quick to ju jump on it it was like okay you're supposed to use like certain hashtags so that it wouldn't drown out certain news like the news was going to be on one hashtag and then all the black squares were going to be on another hashtag i guess you could say but um it was kind of like a media tactic because it drowned out everything. <laughs> like, you, you didn't even get the news. You didn't get anything. And everybody was so quick to jump on it that nobody was really, like, specific on, like, nobody... There was no, like, direction on, on what, what was going to happen with it. And even if there was, it was still, like... It, it still did something. Because who created that? Do you know who started that? Like, what, everybody at the same idea just had, like, everybody at the same time just had the same idea. It was like, ooh, you know what we should do? We should post a black square so that we can, like, drown out that and blah, blah, blah. And just everybody had it at the same time, so everybody did it. No, somebody started that, and then it became a thing. Somebody had to have started it, but we don't know who started it. So, that's another thing. Like, I, I was not going to do that because I heard, like, so many things. Like, of course I want to do that like support it of course i want to support people not wanting racism to be alive of course like i will do that till the ends of the earth i will never support racism of course but i will never support um i guess you can say um I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. I was gonna say racism again, but then like that would that would have sounded weird because I like put emphasis on the never. Um, I'm just I can't. I'm I, I won't I won't support. I can't. I just I can't I can't join in. I can't join in. I won't support it, but I'm not gonna join in. It's just not. It's not who I am, and it's not like. It's not my in it, it's not in my agenda. So everybody has their own purpose here. And a lot of people's purpose here is to be at those protests. I am not one of those people. I was years ago because I would protest, but I would I would I wouldn't protest racism. That's what I'm saying. Like I can't I'm not gonna protest racism because protesting racism just keeps racism alive. And I can't I can't keep it going. I'm not even gonna touch the subject on it because I don't want it to be a thing. And of course you guys don't want it to be a thing as well, so you're going to fight it, but just keeping the topic alive. My best advice is to not keep the topic alive, set that in stone for the future generations. Like, raise your kids, don't even, like, let them know it was a thing. Tell them it was a thing, and it may still be a thing, but there's no need for it. You know, like, just don't even bring it into the house if you... I mean, you may have some small traces of it because I know I I grew up like okay. I personally grew up like I'm Hispanic, right? But there's so many different types of you know Spanish cultures, and other Spanish cultures are racist against other Spanish cultures. So like whether it's black or white or Asian or Hispanic, like it's there's still like 
a thing between different races and i don't know why it's so dumb but it is a thing um and, and it it must it must end <laughs> but um anyways with that being said um i don't know what it, I, I keep i don't know um i don't know where i was going with that but anyways guys I just, I guess what I wanted to say, okay, I guess this is what, this is what I was going to say. My whole purpose of saying this is, because I don't want to talk, again, I don't want to talk about this, like, I don't talk about topics like this, but they kind of get me frustrated because I'm even seeing people that I know get caught up in it. And I'm sure, I'm sure it's a media tactic. I'm sure of it. And... Even people I know who don't trust the government. I mean, okay, yes, you're going to be upset because you're a person of color. I mean, okay, okay. Actually, supposedly people of color cannot be interchangeable with black people. Of course, because I'm a person of color, but I wouldn't consider myself black. But actually, like, I think I might be because, like, I heard Puerto Ricans are black. Because I'm half Puerto Rican. Um, but I don't know. I don't really care, honestly. <laughs> like, if I am or if I'm not. Um because like what that's not who i am like the fact that i don't identify with that but um anyways yeah so i don't like I, I just i can't touch these topics but i have to touch it because a lot of you are seeming like you're losing yourself in this and i just i can't bear to watch it happen because you're falling victim to exactly what the system wants and i can't let my listeners do that like you need to open your mind when something okay when something like this happens out of nowhere see how you reacted did you automatically react oh my gosh this is horrible react this is not i'm not an advocate of that if you listen to my podcast and further episodes i talk very much about moving from being the reactor and being a responder Instead of when something happens, don't initially react. That's our animalistic nature. That's our root chakra, I guess you can say. That's our, that's the very lowest point of consciousness that we can, re like, we can act on. That's not, you're not thinking. You're reacting. You're using your, your, your bodies and your, your energies to just uh, react. Instead of stepping back stepping out of the pendulum swing the whole thing observing okay this is what's happening how why is this happening this is happening because okay of this what is happening because of this what are the pros and cons of things that are happening now how can our system benefit from what this event what is happening by the system i mean by our, our government or the media how how did they benefit from this could it or could it not be a plant to cause chaos these are the types of things that i want you to think when something like this happens i don't want you guys to automatically react we are here we are listening to this podcast we are listening to a podcast like this in general like the topics the the genre that it's in because we want to become our greatest versions because we know our true being now i'm gonna i'm gonna move from from social like everything that's been happening and very like 3d stuff into kind of moving this into the 4d right where we want to we we want to we know the true essence of our consciousness right we know who we are deep down we are beings of light we are energy take away everything take away this physical body we are energy take away our skin color our hair color where our ancestors came from that's another thing that i'll talk about in a sec but minus everything we are all light we are all light and we are all the same light. We're all the same light from the source, okay? Now, we want to aim higher. This is why we do this. We want to aim higher and be more like source. How would source react? 
this is the best way to put yourself in check. If you really want to become your greatest versions, and if you are into spirituality, if you are as devoted to your journey and path as I am, your number one question always should be, how can I be like source in this situation? How can I be like God? What would God do in this situation? Would he see? He sees the chaos, right? He sees fighting between um, people with more melanin in their skin because that's what it is. That's why people are darker. There's a chemical called melanin in our skin and some people have more and some people don't. That's it, really. And he's going to see these people fighting because of that and he's going to laugh. If he's a person, because God is God is not a person. I mean, God can be a person, like is a, is people, like everybody, but it's not like one specific person. Like, oh, hey, God. Even though I, I talk to talk to the universe <laughs> like it is, but um, Haku, I love you, but you gotta get out of here, my love. Um, give me one second because I'm transferring transferring um, no I'm, <laughs> I'm transferring i am shwerking right now hold on Ta here's the the waiting music okay and i'm done voila guys okay so now i can get into the moment and not worry about that okay so yeah like i was saying I actually don't know what I'm saying. Um, yeah, so how can you be like source in this situation? Oh, what was that? Okay, no, it was, it was okay, guys. I'm trying to get get comfortable so I can rant rant to you guys. Um, so yes, how can you be like source in this situation? Now, moving on to to becoming a, the 4D kind of thing. That this is something that's happening. On the on the 3D on here on Earth on people with people who very much identify with being human. Now, of course, I'm gonna identify with being human because that's that's what I am right now. Like I am human, so I like on Earth here I am being human. But actually, I don't identify. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm being human, like. I'm doing human stuff because, like, I'm in a human body. But I don't think I d identify with being, ooh, with being human. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was my microphone. Um, so, yes, moving into the 4D, you just, uh, how, again, 4D, 5D, non-dualistic type of thinking how can we move beyond this how can we see beyond this how can we be less active not less active but how can we how can we take this thinking into this situation because of course okay so we're not human what we're supposed to ignore everything that's happening here because we're we're eventually we'll leave and it doesn't really matter well, nothing ever matters, first of all. Now, while we're here, of course things are going to matter. Like, our family are going to matter, our friends, social injustices, I guess you can say. It's going to matter because here we are. We're here for years, and we don't want to live in, like, a shit world while we're here. You know, we want to try to live in our best environment as possible so we're gonna we're gonna like fight stuff like this of course but to do that to move into the 4d with these kind of situations we have to remember our true essence we have to remember that we are all one 
no matter what. We have to remember we are all one no matter what. We are all light underneath. Now, going back to me seeing racism in the black community with people that I know and people that you probably know, because, just because people are racist towards you doesn't mean you have to be racist towards them. And I know, given the circumstances, it causes other people to become racist. It caught like, without you even knowing. You're gonna, because you're so mad that, okay, these white police are, police officers are killing these black people right you're gonna be resentment you're, you're gonna be resentful against white people or white police officers in general there could be super nice ones who aren't racist at all and you'll still have that those feelings of anger and resentment towards them when they never did anything personally to you you're just gonna have that in you and that's not something good to hold of course, be mad. But be mad at the system. Be mad at everything that has taken place to create that. Be mad the, at the fact that the topic is still going and that's keeping racism alive. Don't be mad at a group of people based off of the pigment of their skin. And yeah, you could be saying this like, Okay, we'll tell that to the white people who have been racist to black people all this time. You tell them that. I am telling them that. I'm telling you that, that right now. I'm not talking specifically to black people. I'm not talking spe specifically to white people. I'm talking to everybody. Do not let this further divide us. Don't think that you are doing good by protesting and then taking it out on all of the police not all of the police are bad okay like most of them yeah okay most of them are shit i'll, I'll say it myself and i don't like judging i'm not a judgeful person but i've seen them do shit stuff because that's what they do as people and maybe they're not ordered to it's not conspiracy theory like that's just they abuse their power. You get a gun, you get a badge, and suddenly you think you can do whatever the fuck you want. And that's not okay. That's an abuse of power. And I don't advocate for that. So, anyways. As I was saying, I just, I can't, I can't join in because I feel like very much there is racism within the Black Lives Matter movement. There's racism not in the Black Lives Matter movement, and I can't join in on any of the topics. The only thing I can do is speak out against racism on my own. I'm not going to join anybody, even though it may, like, may help causes, you know, if a lot of people join together, and of course, but that's not my mission. Everybody, yeah, if you feel called to join this, and you feel so passionate about it, and that's, that's your calling, then go ahead, because that's probably your calling. I'm not saying that nobody should do that, I'm just saying I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna stand here. I'll I'll stand in person, maybe. Who cares? Like I don't know. Whatever it is, I'll I'm standing on my own. I I don't join groups unless I tr truly feel like I can. I support all of the ideals, and I feel true to my group. Like I feel comfortable with everybody who's in my group and personal and all that. But I I will forever be. A, a singular person who will stand against stuff because i am against racism i'm against the chaos i'm against most of this but don't see you're not gonna see me join in on on stuff not anymore at least i would have years ago but anyways what i wanted to talk about with the ancestral um thing I guess you could say, <laughs> ancestors. I've spoken about this before in my past episodes, but is your anger coming? Is your anger yours, first of all? Is your anger yours? Is your anger yours? Why are you mad? 
this is the thing. What I've been seeing in these riots, and not the protests, the riots, is that, okay, there's people who are mad because of it, and then there's people who just want to be destructive. There's people who have their own agendas. Maybe people are just mad at police. It may not be a race thing. And they want to take it out on police, so they're out there rioting. Or maybe they're mad at their city, or they're mad at the government, so they want to riot. Everybody, I felt like everybody in these riots that I was seeing had their own agenda. It wasn't even about George Floyd anymore. Most of the riots. The protests, yes, absolutely. You're protesting, you have a reason. But the riots... Everybody just seemed aimless. People just taking advantage of breaking into things and grabbing more more stuff. Oh, let's break into Gucci. Like, oh, like what what is that what does that say? What are you doing? Like, what is that gonna do for you? What is that gonna do for George Floyd? What is it gonna do for the movement? You know what you're doing? Literally, the riots, they're gonna say, Oh, look at like, okay. And a lot of the lot of people that were in the riots were white people that were destroying it and they were mad of course like there's white people that are mad about the what happened but then there was just like there was a video that i saw okay there's a video that i saw that was like this little white kid with and i hate i hate seeing like i hate seeing saying white people and black people because i really like i don't but this is like this is how people talk like literally like i hate saying it and every time i say it like i just hate myself for saying it but, like, that's how people talk and that's how people differ- differentiate. It's not horrible. This is how we differentiate, like, people, oh, like, by their skin color. Like, why is that a thing? But, anyways, he was, like, smacking the this, like, glass thing with a skateboard, like, trying to break it open. And then this, like, black guy comes behind him and grabs the skateboard and is like, what the hell are you doing? Stop. And then he just, like, goes away. Because it's putting a bad outlook on like black people i guess you could say it's it's causing more they're gonna be like oh look at they're destructive they riot they do this blah 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 blah. this is why we should stay racist and keep them away because this is what they do they're destructive anyways that's what it's gonna look like you're not causing yourself any more good and i'm like oh maybe if we riot to listen no but anyways what i was saying with the ancestral healing is is the anger yours now that, that's where i was going in these groups energy is very much a thing guys energy energy is very much a thing it exists vibes vibes exist if you're entering into a gigantic area full of other people and your energy isn't that strong And what I mean by isn't that strong, because a lot of ours isn't, what I mean that strong is that you stand true to who you are personally, and maybe you feel like that, but maybe you don't. And you take care of your energy, and what I mean by doing this is eating good, taking care of your physical body, taking care of your mental, and elevating yourself on your own this keeps your energy high and protects your energy if you don't have it that high because a lot of us don't because we don't take care of ourselves that good we don't eat that good and we don't do the the energetical practices that would keep our energy this high then our energy is easily adaptable to the environment that we're in whether we feel it or not if we step into a huge area full of people and our energy is not so powerful that it can remain still and unshaken, then it's somehow going to get corrupted or adapt to the energy that it's surrounded by. If you're in a room full of people who are angry, you're going to feel that anger in your body. You may not feel it, but your body's going to feel it. And you're going to take that on. And you'll carry that with you because energy lingers. So say you, you're in that area for a while and then you leave. You're going to have that anger within you. And it might not be yours. It's probably the, just the energy of the room that you surrounded yourself in the whole time. 
Now, yeah, you may be there to protest because you're upset, but a lot of people there have their own anger, maybe because of their own agendas. They're angry about something else, but they're still angry. And people are maybe even more mad and upset. You're going to take that all on and you're going to be even more upset and it's going to create more anger within you. And let me tell you, anger? You, I've, I've posted the emotional frequency chart. You can look it up yourself. Emotional frequency chart. Anger is the second lowest frequency that you can resonate on. Next to fear. Fear is the lowest. Anger is the second lowest. Now for someone who wants to be their greatest version, who wants to uplift their energy, who wants to raise their consciousness to the highest vibrational state, why are you remaining in anger? Why? Tell me. Ask yourself, why are you remaining in anger? Why is it that you're stagnant in this energy? Why are you not able to transmute that anger into something else? Why are you not able to think clearly enough to not be angry, to think of a solution, to be more positive, to make a more impact? So with the ancestral healing, maybe your anger say you're not say you're not um you know in these environments where you can adapt this energy right ancestral healing we carry our ancestors trauma we do it's in our dna now we can stop cycles through generations we repeat cycles until they're fixed i guess you could say from our ancestors and we create more positive new cycles but we do hold that within us unless we do the work we are now in the times where we're doing the work this is the beginning of everything the era that we're in is the beginning of everything i don't think our parents did the work if they did i mean okay i feel like some of our parents did the work depending on how you grew up if you grew up very indigenous or surrounded by you know um, a very spiritual essence who, of people who did the work, then yeah, it, it may or may not have been stopped. It's a generation that keeps going. You know, we start new cycles. But a lot of us don't do the work. A lot of our families haven't done, our, done the work. The, our parents, our grandparents. So what I mean is this may be your ancestor's trauma. Something like this happens. You are a person who has history of slavery in your family. Your ancestors were slaves. The trauma that they went through as slaves remains in your DNA. Now you can stop this. You can do the work. You can stop these cycles and heal it. You can heal your ancestral trauma. But that may be what's in you. It may not be your own personal anger. Because you personally, a lot of you, not a lot of you personally, because I don't know who's listening to this, but a lot of people who are protesting racism haven't experienced racism themselves but feel personally offended and it may not be yours it may be how you grew up maybe you're offended for somebody else and of course white people white people <laughs> um you know they're protesting because of course, they haven't experienced racism, but they still fight against it because they don't want it to be a thing. But there's also black people who haven't experienced racism, surprisingly, more likely in more like diverse areas. But I mean, probably, I think everybody has experienced racism. Maybe even like white people in black communities, of course they're going to experience racism because it's a primarily black community. But what I'm saying is it may not be your trauma. It may not be your anger that you're holding within you that's causing you to feel this way. So I suggest looking into that. Maybe doing doing the work, ancestral healing work. I don't know what it takes to do that. Um, somebody I suggest is Bridget Nielsen on YouTube. Um, she talks a lot about ancestral healing. She does a lot of workshops and stuff around that because she knows a lot about that stuff. So that's mostly where I've heard the topic from. 
um, and she knows like how how it holds in our body and she can tell us how to transmute that so I very highly suggest Bridget Nielsen her, um, she's on YouTube but to wrap things up I just to kind of go over <laughs> what my my main reason for talking about this was is that I don't want you guys falling victim to the system. That's it. As my personal listeners, because I know a lot of you personally, and also I, a lot of you I don't know personally. A lot of you found me through the podcast. A lot of people, this is your first time listening to the podcast, and I'm here. This whole podcast, the whole reason why I created this was so to help people become their greatest version and to help move people from the 3d to a 4d type of mindset and also adapt um, a non-dualistic mindset now a lot of my non non-dualistic ideals i guess you can say um very much come from different uh philosophies and religions that i've studied um mainly my main uh spiritual path i guess you can say um because i kind of adapted my own i don't really conform to anything but um i study everything my main um philosophy that i study is taoism um a lot of you may see me post things about tao and a lot of my poetry i mentioned tao um and this is very just there's no half and half to it it's it's basically yin and yang like there is half and half but it's just one so and this is very much an also chinese philosophy um well taoism is a, Chi a eastern philosophy just chinese um <laughs> but yin and yang is Tao, the whole complete of it and that's just the way things are that's the way this universe works um, but also, besides Tao, is Advaita Vedanta, which is a sect of Hinduism, or uh, Sanatana Dharma, and Advaita Vedanta is non-duality, based off of non-dualistic uh, nature. So, and it's kind of just um, also uh, Dzogchen, Dzogchen Zen, or Buddhism is also non-dualistic as well um but anyways to sum it up because we have reached an hour and i made it an hour i thought it was gonna be a short video but i worked while i was talking and it just everything worked out well now i got a lot of stuff to do today guys <laughs> but yes to to wrap this up um I just really want you to guys not to fall victim to this system. When something like this happens again, I would love for you to not initially react, but to step back and view the situation in without being judgmental, with not picking a side or a viewpoint, just seeing what it is for it is, seeing everything, seeing each viewpoint, um, and asking yourself how the system can benefit from it or the government or you know the establishment, whatever it is. Um, because they very much love to bet, like make money off of us or somehow get power over us. Especially if it's mainstream and it's causing such a big deal, it may be a plan. So I just want you guys to not initially react, but kind of step back and see the situation for what it is. And um, kind of come up with your own solution. So like, I guess you can say, like, of course, okay, we're going to want to fight this. Now, what do we do? If we have to do this, like... If, if we're not going to join all the chaos and the protests and all that, like, what do we do? Do your own work. I say this all the time. You cannot save anyone until you save yourself. Do your own work. Do your own work and spread, spread, spread the, the nature of doing your own work. Tell other people to do their own work. Find references. One of them, me being... One of the references being my podcast. <laughs> Be like, listen to Third Eye Saves. But also, you can follow many other people. Watch videos. Read books on 
maybe these philosophies, maybe these non-dualistic philosophies appeal to you. I've, I've, they've appealed to me because I've, I've felt this way. And when I found out that they were philosophies and ideas, I, I very much resonated with them. So do your own work, study about how you can become, first of all, we have to become our greatest versions. Like we have to be on our shit all the time in order to spread this energy, in order to spread this love. So we do our work, right? We don't be, re we're not reactors, right? We're responders. And this way we can come up with reasonable solutions. If you're stuck in chaos and looking like, oh, what do we do? Blah, 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 I'm angry, blah, 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 like everywhere. You're not thinking clearly. You're not thinking of a solution. You just want to fight. Think of a solution that doesn't cause you to create chaos or like that does wrong to other people or to somebody else, but also is now the time to create community, your card, community. Find your tribe. Find people who are also willing to approach these situations in a more reasonable way. To create a better environment in your community. Do your work. Spread love. Don't keep the topic of racism going. Just move forward. Yes, people are racist. How do we move forward? Let's not keep talking about people are racist, people are racist, people are racist. Let's move forward. Not talk about how people are racist. Sorry, how could like jump on my altar? <laughs> um, and move on from it. What do we do now? How do we create a community that's not racist? I feel like it's a great idea, and this is I I, pr I proposed this idea to to uh, my boyfriend the other day when all this actually started happening, um, that we should be creating instead of keeping the, the topic of racism alive, we should create a community where it's not alive. We can build a community that's everybody, and it's just chill. <laughs> Of course, police brutality is going to be a thing. It's a thing that's obviously resulting in the way they want it to, so it's going to continue to be a thing. And we can fight it. We can fight b police brutality. And because it's okay, so we're defunding the police, right? And I know we're hitting an hour, and I'm going to go a little over an hour. But it can be a thing that can be changed. I've seen, I'm seeing um, some... some actions to to cause uh some actions to cause um like them to kind of change the laws around where like police brutality ends in like a life sentence in jail or something like if something like this happens then they get life in jail okay i guess that's fine um i'll accept no <laughs> like i'm the judge i'm like okay i accept of that uh no okay that's that that sounds good but to get that people have to fight for that right so there's petitions, there's stuff like that. And I see like all of these as viable things to do. I don't know if that's the right word, but I see I see that, that that's a pretty good route to go with. Um, protesting, I think protesting works to an extent. Um, I haven't really seen, I feel like if a lot of people protest, I feel like strikes work, especially when it has to do with the business, uh, like establishments. Um, this is this happens more in like the workforce but um you know the media the government they all work together with you know these big ex big establishments these big companies you know Walmart Apple uh you know you know what i mean like these big these big companies um when we kind of stop funding them because of this cause right so like say we're like pro like put put officers in jail for life for police brutality right stop funding giving money to all these big establishments and companies in order to promote that it may work because you know they're losing money 
they're not benefiting off of it, right? So we need to give the government the least, most least reasons, I don't know, <laughs> like less reasons to have our money because they're, they're making money off of us. I don't trust donating to these pro uh, Black Lives Matter things. Just because, like, what what is that money going to? I mean, they may say where the money is going to, but like, how how is you don't how how are how is you donating? How is you donating? Is it, how are you donating? I don't think that's the right phrase. How <laughs> I don't even know how to say this. How I'm just gonna say it with is how is you donating? That doesn't sound right. Gonna help end racism. You funding a movement or a, like a posse of people or like a a group how is you giving how is you giving the money gonna help stop racism it's not gonna help stop racism so we need to get to the source of course we want to you know we want to help people right we want to you know do what we can but we have to get to the source like yeah we can keep helping on these people all we want but we're gonna keep helping them forever because the source hasn't been dealt with we need to deal with the source of racism, which is the topic of it, which keeping it alive in our lives. And we need to obliterate it completely. And it's not going to happen all in one one moment. But we can work towards that by not keeping it a thing. We can promote the fact that we are all one. We can promote the fact that we are all one and keep it in people's faces. We are all one. We are all one. We're not going to say me black, you white, me Hispanic, you Asian. We are all one. No, we are all one. Despite where we come from, where our ancestors come from, how much melanin we have in our skin. If he has blue hair, if she has blonde hair. We're not going to talk about that. We are all one and that's all there is. We are one and we are light. That's what we'll talk about because that's what it is. Let's take away all the minor details. Anyways, that's all I had to say for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys don't hate me somewhat for things that I said. If I said anything that offended you, let me know. And I won't apologize because I stand true to my truths. And I don't think I said anything offensive. And people getting offended is just them getting offended. I'm not being offensive. You're just getting offended. So you need to ask yourself why you feel offended. Um, because I didn't, I don't, I didn't say anything offensive. I, I, I just, I, I don't think so. But if I hurt your feelings, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but it is true. I don't. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I just can't, guys, I just can't, <laughs> but I love you guys so much, thank you for listening to this episode, if this is your first time listening, thank you, I hope you support um, us being one, <laughs> and uh, I hope you don't give any more money and your energy to the establishment because that's what they want. They're energy hungry. They nom nom nom. They feed off of your good energy. So please keep working on yourself, being the best versions of yourself. And I think that's the only way that's the only way we can do this. Because if we all become the greatest versions of ourselves and we all move to the 4D consciousness, there is no duality in the 4D and the 5D. That's something that's here in on on as a in, in our human experience in the 3d that's not gonna be that's not gonna be over there so let's move let's move over there how do we move over there well we got to obliterate these conversations we got to become our greatest versions we got to raise up our energy we got to realize that we are actually all one that's how we do it guys so Thank you again for listening. I love you guys so much. My name is Natalia. You just listened to another episode of Third Eye Sives. <laughs> um, follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is Natalia of Earth. N-A-T-A-L-I-A of Earth. This planet Earth. And yeah, do I have anything else to say? Nope, because I gotta, I gotta do stuff, guys. I gotta do 
stuff i hope you guys enjoy your week i will talk to you again next week i'm sorry i'm not very active on social media right now it's just there's so much going on that i'd rather not talk just because i just I don't know, and i actually don't even feel like it like i just i just don't i can't deal with the social media right now and honestly if i could i would delete it but i have to connect with you guys that's kind of been my main discussion i was gonna talk i was gonna do a very personal episode this week but then like you know all this stuff happened and i had to talk on it but i've just been dealing with not wanting to be a part of social media and i literally will not i'm not gonna delete my instagram mainly because it's my main way to connect with you guys um and to kind of keep a more uh keep um keep this podcast going in a more broader spectrum so people can like find it easier um but also a new exciting announcement um i try i was gonna do it for this week but i got so busy this week um i have like the yoga studio is gonna open up soon um you know a, a lot of a lot of things are happening right now so i'm kind of like caught up but um i am gonna get this podcast on youtube and i'm going to be video recording it so as i'm talking like you hear me talking now it's gonna be on video soon and we'll be on YouTube, so you can also watch the podcast on YouTube, or you can listen to it on YouTube for those of you who have, like, YouTube music and stuff. It's just to, um, add this on an, another platform. So, coming soon to YouTube. And then I think I'm actually gonna start, like, besides posting the podcast on YouTube, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel, um, and then just post, like, the episodes on it. But it's not really gonna be, like, the podcast. The podcast is mainly gonna, you know, talk about like spirituality and um you know my journey stuff like that uh tips like everything that i've been doing the podcast is gonna stay the same i probably won't put it in the youtube channel i think the youtube channel is gonna be pretty personal um just stuff that i do it's kind of gonna be like a vlog and then yeah i think it's just gonna be like a vlog kind of um youtube channel but um i may do some videos like this and i'll mention it in the podcast so you guys can watch it and stuff but it's not gonna be anything like that so don't feel obligated to 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 watch it i guess um but yeah it's gonna be like just me it's probably gonna be like kind of like a girly one i don't know i've I've been i've been going through a phase right now where i'm like it's not a phase it's just i i move back and forth between you know my spiritual self and my girly egotistical self i guess you could say and so i don't think it's egotistical i don't know and i'm kind of having an identity crisis right now but you know we don't mainly because you know like we don't have identities right we're just we're just spirit so like what what do i identify with you know but (laughs) anyway anyways i love you guys thank you so much for listening um i'll talk to you guys next week um if you have any questions comments please feel free to dm me on instagram i think if you're listening to this on anchor you can also message me i don't really know but instagram is my main go-to source of contact i will answer you back don't think that i won't because i will um i love all you guys i love talking to all of you guys um, if you listen to this and have been listening to this and we've talked before, still feel free, feel free to reach out to me. Let me know what you thought about this episode, what you feel, um, has been actually going on or, or if you have any comments, just feel free to hit me with them. Um, I love you guys so much. Have a wonderful week. Stay safe. Stay, stay elevated, I guess you can say, and just be calm, be chill guys. Uh, work on yourself. Um, that's all I can say really. And stay peaceful. Peace, 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 peace. Shanti, shanti, shanti. Peace.